What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python tutorial video. This video is going to be covering a bit more of an advanced topic and it's going to be concerning generators within Python. First off, what even is a generator? The idea of a generator is to generate the specific item that you're looking for in a list that you want to use and you're like, say you want to iterate through a list. The idea of the generator is to generate that item that you need right at that moment then throw it away when you're done. It's also called like lazy generation, that kind of stuff. Um, and the end result of this is a just drastic improvement in processing time. Uh, most of the time it's going to be like a night and day de difference when it comes to memory usage. You might even find that some of the tasks that were the most memory uh, using tasks that you were doing suddenly are using no noticeable difference in memory at all, right? Um, or you don't even notice that they're using memory, rather, is what I'm trying to say. It's a huge difference. Uh, alongside that, you're also, um, your processing time will improve uh, pretty significantly. Now, depending on the kind of operation you're doing, the processing time, you might not notice such a sh substantial increase, and sometimes your processing time will improve, but for that short span where it's doing whatever it's supposed to be doing, your, your uh your actual CPU usage will increase, even though RAM will, in theory, go down and CPU usage might go up. For the most part, though, if you use these correctly, um, I mean, it, it could be the difference between, like, say you're, you're running, you know, uh, some sort of web app or something like that, and your processing costs are maybe $100 a month. Um, yeah, like, the difference between that is, like, you might be using $100 a month of processing, you use this, and it changes to, like, a dollar a month worth of processing. I mean, it's just huge differences. So uh, knowing and understanding generators and like the scenario where you might get a generator is pretty useful. So one of the easiest uh, ways to show this is when you're considering a some sort of uh, huge list and in this case we're going to use a range function uh, to generate a massive list for ourselves. Um, you don't really need to import anything to write your own generator. I'm going to import time simply because we're going to be benchmarking um, some stuff. So uh, well, I'm going to call this variable start t for start time, and that's going to equal whatever time uh, the time is at the, at the time. And then we're going to say x equals range, and we're going to do the range of 150 million to 300 million. Um, and then we're going to say we want to print x 555, so the 556th uh, number basically is what 555 will give us and then we're going to say uh, print um, time took with time uh, I guess we'll say time normally took uh, will be um, current time dot time minus start time it's a little print out you know how many seconds this process took uh, to do it now, what I'm also going to do is I'll bring over my processing here, uh, just for the sense of benchmarking. Um, my processor is an i7-3930K, it's overclocked about 40%, and my RAM, I have 16 gigs of RAM. So now let's run this and see what happens uh, with this typical RAM. Whoops, wrong key. <laughs> anyway, run it, pull this up. And you can see my RAM went way up to about 14.3, 14.5-ish. You see the CPU usage went up a little bit at least. Um, but that might be something that's going on in the background. Because really what happens is it just stores that list to memory. So we can come over here and we can see that, okay, it did print the 556, so to speak, value, which ended up being, you know, 150,555. And the time it took to do this was 2.31 seconds. So we'll leave that there. Um, I'll leave the processor there too, or all this stuff there. Uh, and also, while the program is still running, it's still storing this range into memory. So we could, in theory, print X, and it would print out that range. So it's all stored to RAM. But you'll see as soon as I close out of this, um, as it dumps the memory, it should jump back down again or drop back down again. As you can see now, it's 10.1 gigabytes. So you can see both that processing time and RAM usage 
either even if you dumped x like in theory what you can do sometimes if you can't use generators you can say x equals this when I, whenever you're all done and that would dump uh, x right so you could do that but while it's calculating it's still using that much ram you know until you dump x so uh, python actually has built-in function called x range which is very similar to the typical range only you just call it x range so literally going to just copy this and paste it down here and I'll just jump jumble them together um, and then we'll call this uh, generator took and then the only thing is range you just say x range and this specifies Python's generator function that uh, does the, basically the exact same thing that range would do only it uses a generator so now let's go ahead and benchmark this stuff and I'll pull this over again actually we should I should cancel the one but then we'll compare them anyways um, so you can see that the um, the time normally took about 1.87 seconds whereas with the generator it took 1.1 seconds and the other thing I wouldn't mind doing is let's go ahead and dump this for now and then um, just display uh, the RAM usage here. So CPU usage kind of spiked a little bit, otherwise nothing much happened there. And then you can also see the generator actually this time took uh, 0 .00399 or whatever. Um, so let me run that again, because uh, that was more like the result I'm looking for anyways. Yeah, so you can see it did it again. Uh, it could possibly be just the uh, restorage of X, possibly. I'm not quite sure. Uh, let's call this Y and Y and see if that makes any noticeable change for us. There we go. So, so the main issue there, uh, the reason why at the first attempt uh, it took so long was we were using the same variable. So this was just replacing that variable. And I think that's what, what took it so long. So this is the drastic increase that you should have been seeing. So not only in this specific scenario do we see the massive, not only time increase or uh, massive time decrease rather, um, we also could see, although, you know, because we didn't clear why, uh, we also saw when we just ran uh, the basic version here, uh, or with the range down here, we also saw that, I mean, there was like, you didn't even notice the, the RAM. So huge differences, as you can see. And then also, obviously, the same uh, functionality. So then the question is, you know, <laughs> okay, cool, you know, we can make large range functions, you know, can we actually harness this power for our own custom tasks, right? And the answer to that, yes, yes you can. It's just a, a syntactical change, basically, that you're gonna have to do. So now let's consider something, and actually, uh, we won't use, um, well, let me just show you. So what we're gonna do here is, we'll just delete all of these for now, and actually we'll leave, I'll leave the, uh, the benchmarking stuff there. And so now, the regular one, we're gonna say, um, for n in range of uh, 1 million, so we'll make a for loop, uh, we're going to say x equals n uh, plus n. So it's just going to add itself uh, together. Now, since this is such a large digit or a large um, number, like for example, I could just do this 10 and then we'll just say uh, print x for now and then I'll we'll go back on this in just a moment so now if we come down here and we said uh, we'd make this now a generator we'll call this simple gen equals uh, and then we're going to do n plus n for uh, n in range so we're not even using x range here uh, and then we'll just do 10 right um, so we'll do that and that as both of these will end up this will iterate through the list this will create a list that we can't iterate through so then we would say you know for uh, n in simple gen um, print n save that and this is 10 that's 10 generator took yeah. So we can do that, make sure we did everything right. Uh, let's go ahead and run that now. And just so you guys can see that it's doing the same thing. We printed it out. I don't want to print it out. 
but I just want to show you the performance difference um, after this. I just want to show you that they do the same thing. So for each number, it's just adding it to each other, right? And so this was slightly quicker, but we were using such a small number that there's no, you know, not surprisingly a huge noticeable difference. So now let's get rid of the actual printing process, and we could even say for n in simple gen pass, just to make it the most fair um, calculation possible. So we could say, instead of 10, we could go 10,000. Uh, so I add just three zeros and run it. And here you can see that the time normally took, you know, 0 0.005. This one was 0 0.003. Close out of this. Uh, let's add, you know, three more zeros here. Run it again. And then again, not the hugest uh, production difference there, simply because we are iterating through um, just a regular thing. Um, but anyway, you get the idea there. And now finally, let's make an even uh, another function here. So let's delete this and delete this. And this one we're going to be, uh, we're going to find two functions. So this will be define add nums and then n for the nums that we want to add. And then we're going to say all n for all nums equals range n. We're going to say x equals 0 current num equals zero and then while x is less than length of all n we want to do cur num plus equal oops sorry plus equals x and then x plus equals one finally when this is all done we return uh cur num and what this is going to do is just going to add every number in the range of this. So if we put, say, 10, it's going to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and so on all the way to 10. So that's what this function is going to do. Now let's write a function that does the exact same thing. And we'll do that down here. So we'll say, um, let me think here. So it'll be defined. We'll do add nums gen n. So no difference there. And then we'll say cur num equals zero. And then here we do while cur num is less than n, we are going to yield cur num. Yield is used with our generators. It's basically going to do the same thing as return, only it's like return for generators, basically. And next, cur num plus equals one. Now, uh, let's come down, let's see, generator took, uh, I want to go ahead and print it out. So let's come here and we'll say print add nums, uh, and then we'll do uh, 10, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, so 10 million. Um, then I'll just copy this just so we don't screw up. Uh, and then down here I'll do uh, print add nums gen. And then again, 10 million. And then we'll save this and we'll run this one. Bring it over here and we'll wait. We can watch. Pro oh, shoot. Anyway, uh, did we not? Maybe we didn't. Uh, hold up. Yeah, my bad. Uh, <laughs> we need to print the sum of adnums generator. Try again, son. Close that. And, okay, rerun it. And I'll try to pull up here. There we go. Of course. Okay. So anyway, I just want to leave the processes up, or the uh, this up while they were running. And so here we can see that we got the same result. The first one took uh, over three seconds to do, and the second one took just over two seconds to do. So now, again, just as I was saying before, you know, some some variations of using generators aren't necessarily going to offer, you know, dr huge differences. But the difference between 2.09 seconds and uh, 3.17 seconds spanned over the course of something like this that repeats all day. I mean, we're talking huge, huge differences here. So. Uh,
anyway, generators are a great tool for pretty much anyone that's operating in any commercial environment or something that's using a lot of processing constantly. Uh, definitely a good addition to give to your scripts if you can. So anyway, uh, that's going to cover generators. Kind of a long-ish tutorial, but I wanted to show a lot of examples, as many or at least three examples that uh, kind of illustrate the idea of a generator uh, compared to a similar uh, non-generator function. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful for some of you guys. I did get a request for this one, so I wanted to put this out. Um, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.